Hi, I'm Arye Tepper, and welcome to our event. We've come together tonight to strengthen the resilience of those who oppose racism and anti-Semitism, and we're going to do that by taking an enjoyable and stimulating ride through Albert Murray's wisdom and the omni-American tradition of jazz music and thought. And I'll start with a story, an old story from the tradition, one of the tradition's first flowers, a story called Bonne and Paul, written in 1918 by a 24-year-old man named Gene Toomer. Gene Toomer's ancestors were both so-called black and white people. In his day, Toomer was considered by American norms to be black simply, and anyone with sense could see that didn't make any sense. But an entire socioeconomic order depended on that fiction, the fiction of race and racial essentialism, the notion that every individual can be reduced to a category based upon the color of their skin or their particular ancestry. But back in 1918, Toomer saw through that fiction, and in his story, Bonner and Paul, Toomer imagines Bonner and Paul living in Chicago as college classmates in the 19-teens. This was Boomtown, Chicago, the main destination in the Great Migration when hundreds of thousands of so-called black Americans were heading north along the newly laid steel power of the American railways. If you're looking for a soundtrack, you can imagine Sidney Bechet, a sometime Chicago resident, playing the blues, the drummer slapping his brushes, easy, the rhythm of a railroad train coming down the railroad track. So, Bonner and Paul go out on a date. Bonner is a young white woman, and Paul is mixed race, ethnically ambiguous. He can pass for white, but people look at him funny. They go out on their date, and people look at Paul's red, brown face. Toomer imagines people wondering, what is he? A Spaniard, an Indian, an Italian, a Mexican, a Hindu, or a Japanese? Paul's white friend, Art, barks back at the onlookers, like they did back in the 19-teens, calling them a goddamn pack of owl-hide hyenas. But Paul has an epiphany. He understands that people don't see him as he sees himself. And he also understands that his vision of the world is intensely real. Toomer writes, their stares giving him to himself filled something. There was fullness and strength and peace about it all. He saw himself cloudy but real, cloudy, as in mixed, but genuine. Paul, after he leaves the restaurant, shares his vision with the black doorman. I came to tell you, brother, that white faces are petals of roses, that dark faces are petals of dusk, and I'm going out to gather petals. Toomer shows us Paul returning the onlooker's gaze with a deeper vision and his joy in discovering his mission to gather beauty both light and dark. It's Chicago, 1918, and Gene Toomer's Paul just stomped the blues. Stomping the blues. That, says Albert Murray, is what we do whenever we overcome the power that aims to diminish our life and vitality. We stomp the blues, joyfully. Those people looking at Paul and trying to put him in a box were what Murray playfully called blue devils, blind to the beauty of his, his humanity. If it had been an episode of The Twilight Zone, they would have asked Paul if they can show him to his box, and they wouldn't have meant a box seat. Bonner, she couldn't, handle, she couldn't handle the complexity. And when Paul gets back to where they'd been standing, she's gone. Gene Toomer's story, Bonner and Paul, helps us understand what's at stake. Still, 103 years after Toomer wrote his story, it remains news. We are called upon to stomp the blues of race and racial essentialism like Paul did, without resentment and to emerge from the struggle with an augmented sense of life. That's blues idiom wisdom. Yeah, it's easier to respond to bigotry by becoming resentful or closing your mind and talking like Archie Bunker, you goddamn pack of owl-eyed hyenas. But in order to remain open to the beauty and richness of human life, to absorb human excellence wherever it's found, there's no choice but to stomp the blues of racial essentialism, then to wait for them to return and to stomp them again. And again, until you begin to see their existence as an opportunity, an opportunity to do your thing. Murray called that antagonistic cooperation. The blue devils you see make the hero. Just like in Toomer's story, the people trying to reduce Paul enabled him to expand his vision. So the next time you face a dragon, you can genuinely smile and say, I want to thank you for letting me be myself again. This special event dedicated to combating racism and anti-Semitism together 
and shaping an omni-American future will take us on a journey through the thought and spirit of the man who taught us the meaning of stomping the blues, Albert Murray. Along the way, we'll enjoy world-class jazz and hear from an all-star lineup of fascinating contemporary writers, scholars, activists, and mu musical artists. Together, we'll be interpreting, musically performing, commenting on, and exploring Albert Murray's vision of omni-American culture and what my friend and partner, Greg Thomas, calls the blues idiom wisdom tradition, a vitally and vitally important tradition that generously shares its riches with anyone who genuinely listens. This event is dedicated to exploring and celebrating the blues idiom wisdom tradition. We hope you enjoy the ride.